have food, we have lots of shopping, lots of sales, and it's a great day to come out and enjoy the live entertainment and um, the weather and everything else about Angel's Camp and all the merchants will be putting out tables with their sale products and whatever else they want out on the sidewalk. And it's a great day, so come on out. So it's this Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If I can have Bob Rogers come up here and fill us in on May 2nd, Gold Rush Days, Reminders Picture. Thanks, Bob. I'd also like to say that last year on your sidewalk sale day, we put our table out at the museum and did very well on Saturday. We put it out on Sunday and on Monday, and we had good sales every day. So we'll be out there with you. Uh, the Miners Picnic is coming up on May 2nd. It's going to be sponsored by the Angels Camp Museum Foundation. It's the replacement for the um, uh, Italian Heritage Days event that you folks were involved in last year. We're starting out with an event that's going to be totally on the museum grounds and, and hopefully keep it, you know, control the situation as we grow and, and develop it, but it's going to be spectacular. We have uh, the 16th President of the United States coming. It was very hard to reach, but Abraham Lincoln will be there. We have uh, Mark Twain, Black Bar. We're going to have uh, gold panning. Uh, we will have uh, a frog jump. There will be a lot of activities. People will be in uh, costume. There's going to be a lot of demonstrations of old type crafts and things of this nature. Uh, it's a fun family event. It's free admission to the uh, uh, to anyone who comes, and then we have a minor stew and some things for the children or for the adults, but it's going to be a fun family day. We welcome you to come. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, something new just came into today to Angel's Camp. This is a new restaurant guide. There will be one of these in every restaurant, every uh, bank, every real estate office, every motel and hotel in town. So uh, we have some out here tonight, so make sure you get them. Put them next to your phone at home. So when you're looking for something to eat, it's two-sided, and uh, we'll hope it'll help the businesses here in Angels Camp. And that is sponsored by the Angels Camp Business Association. Starting on June 5th, we're starting Fresh Fridays in Utica Park. It'll be uh, go all the way through October, so there'll be fresh flowers, produce, beer, wine, and live music. So please come and join us at Utica Park. We have two new businesses in town. The first one is Susie Dean's Pastries on Main Street, right across from the business in The other one is right here where we're sitting. Yes, our own Sherry Smith, Vice President of ACPA, is now the owner of Camps the bar, the restaurant, and the grill downstairs. Congratulations. And I think before I wait tonight, she'll be the newest member of that one. <laughs> also, visiting, uh, visiting us tonight is Lisa Mayo from the Visitors Bureau. Can we have a few words from you, please? She has a new program. Congratulations on the restaurant night. That is going to help us out tremendously. And I think it will help us maybe get a few new members. Um, the Visitor Spirit is, uh, is just starting a program. This week we're rolling it out. It's called VIP. It stands for Visitor Incentive Program. And what it is is a discount for visitors. That's exactly what its name is all about. <laughs> um, and what we've done is we've shared this with our members to give us discounts they would like to provide. We've asked they be good for at least the end of the year because we'd like to see this program really have a, a long lifespan. And um, we will advertise in the ads that we do. We will advertise um, through our visitor guide distribution. We'll be doing a lot of press releases about this program. So people will get the information. If they come to the visitor center, which is open seven days a week, they can pick up a VIP card. And this is a card, I know you cannot see it from where you are sitting, but it goes on your keychain. So when they come in, they pick up this little keychain and it says Calaveras County Visitors Bureau and Calaveras VIP, a visitor incentive program for very important people. It really says all that on this little card. And then on the back, they have our, it has our website and our phone number. So hopefully, I'm thinking they're gonna keep this on their keychain. Maybe they'll get lazy and then we'll take it off and look at it and call us and come back. And 
you return visitors. But it's been really great. Uh, VIA has volunteered, VIA Magazine has volunteered to uh, partner with us on this, and they are going to be offering us some sort of a gift if people come in. So for the ads that we do with VIA, it will say come in for your visitor um, incentive program card as well as a free gift from VIA. So that would be a really nice partnership. We currently have 32 partners. Um, that have offered up discounts somewhere in this room, Melanie, Michelle, and there's some other folks around here. But I did notice under dining, we do not have one Angel's Camp restaurant. Ah! So that guy is going to be put to <laughs> Apparently we have one now. <laughs> so um, if you all want to look at this, I can pass this around. You can see who's on here, what's going on. But we are rolling it out this week. Probably once a month we'll be updating it so it's new people want to join in on it. Um, you do have to be a member of the Visitors Bureau to be on this, um, but it's a, it's a, I think it's going to be a really great program. I think hopefully you're going to start to see a lot of these around, and these will be in the windows or in a prominent place in the business so people know that that's a business that extends to the VIP part. So thank you. Okay, great. I think you guys can hear me now. Uh, 
Uh, I'm Rosie. I'm from Bear Valley. Um, I think one of the, the first questions I get with this presentation was, Bear Valley have to do with Angels Camp and why are you here? And when I heard what was happening at Angels Camp with this brand new leadership team, um, it was really exciting for us. I think there's a lot of things happening along the corridor from South Creek to Murphy's to our development up in Bear Valley. And for Angels Camp to engage in this initiative that they're doing is really, really exciting. I think it's exciting for the entire corridor as we all collaborate and work together. And the timing is really good as, as we're working on these things to redevelop, you know, things that we're doing in Bear Valley. Saddle Creek, what's happening with them, and Angels Camp now coming on board um, to really start pushing Highway 4. I think it's going to be good for all of us. So what we hope to do today, and thank you for your time and being here, is kind of give you an overview of what's happening. What is this branding leadership team, and uh, what are we trying to do? Where are we at today, and, and what's the next steps going forward? Um, these really cool graphics, do you see right off the, the back of the presentation, will give you a good flavor of where we're heading, and what Angels Camp is trying to do, and take advantage of our great history with the frog, the jumping frog, and also take advantage of all the great assets along the corridor, from biking and hiking to water skiing, snow skiing, and all those wonderful activities that we have that can really help put Angels Camp on the map and in turn give Highway 4, allow people to make that choice to choose Highway 4. California, a great place to live. We have a lot of choices and places to go. And if we can get tourists to choose Highway 4, we're all going to be successful. So um, redefining the rush is kind of this theme that you'll see throughout this. Um, the team worked with the group called DDI. Um, some of you might have been at the presentation a couple years ago. Yeah, okay. So the folks from DDI came out, um, talked about what does it take, how do you get that unique value proposition for a city and turn it into something that adds value to the guests that come. And uh, they engaged, they were really excited about what this gentleman had to say, engaged with the company called DDI, came up with an action plan, and this is the result of the action plan. What we're out doing now is to tell you a little bit about it. So let me see if this thing behaves. Um, and I can run through this. Aim. Well, Buck, can you be my turner? <laughs> Page down. All right, there we go. So, again, the overview, as I talked about, it's a brand for Angels Camp. What is Angels Camp about? When people say, oh, you want to go to Angels Camp, you want people to say something. They go, oh, yeah, Angels Camp, that's that place where. And the frog has been a wonderful foundation and something for this group to grab onto because everybody knows that. Mark Twain, famous. How do we take that and take it on to the next level and take advantage of all things happening here? So this is a 5 to 15 year initiative of an action plan underway that includes budget, plans, collateral, advertising, several steps, obviously it all takes time, but as well as taking the area in the downtown and creating it as a place where people can come, spend the night, go out to eat, shop, and while you're here, go out and do your hiking, do your biking, or whatever else that you want to do. Um, several aspects involved, product development plan, Kathy heads of that team, the whole group is a little over 30 people, I think, volunteers, Angels Camp uh, businesses, as well as myself and Bear Valley and a few other businesses along the corridor. Um, as again, I think it's really important for the entire corridor that we get on board and support this. Capital projects have been identified or at least thought about. You know, what are the things that we really need to do in this area to get out there, talk about Angels Camp, and then they wait, and then when they show up, we meet that promise. You know, we don't want to just go talk about how great Angels Camp is and they show up and go, okay, what have we done here? So there's lots of steps to go through, um, and that's why the product development team is certainly important. And as we go through this, you'll see some of the activities that are taking place. And of course, the advertising public relations, that's what we're out doing right now, just letting the community know what's happening. Thank you. It's thinking, it's thinking. Okay, so some quick facts. Tourism, huge for us. Fastest growing industry. $700 billion annually in the U.S. And everybody knows, and Lisa can tell us the numbers, this is huge for this area. Uh, we have such an opportunity with what we offer here. I, I don't know of any other place in California because we look at it all the time. When you get on a highway, and you can within an hour, and all in the same day, as a matter of fact, go snow skiing in the morning, go golfing in the afternoon, and then go do some wine tasting. It, there is no other place like that. It's very unique, and it's important for us to take advantage of that. We're all going to be successful. The primary spend is lodging, shopping, and dining. What they call those other activities are just the outside activities um, that people do. But the main dollars they spend is after 6 o'clock. 
That's when they come down and they spend the night at a hotel. They spend money on food. How does Angels Camp take advantage of that? And they recognize that's an opportunity there. <laughs> so what do you need to make a great destination? Something we learned from DDI as they went through their, their presentation for us, a compelling lure. So Angels Camp thought about, you know, let's work with this team and how do we come up with what is happening in Angels Camp that we can say this is a great place to come. And when you sit here and I, and I think about this because I talk to a lot of people now, there is so much you can do in this area. Uh, you're spending a night in Angels Inn Motel. Within, you know, 15 minutes, there's a ton of activities. Drive another 45, and you can add 40 more activities to do. So the compelling lure as we went through that was, this is a really key place for outdoor activity. Now, how do we add and take advantage of that lodging, shopping, and dining activity as well? So the lure has to be what gets people here. They're going to go, oh, yeah, let's go to Angels Camp. We'll book a room. We're going to have dinner, and in the morning, we're going to get up and go skiing. We're going to get up and go play golf. Now, how do we capture the rest of those dollars? Well, the shops and the dining have got to be aligned. We can't have people show up. They're going to have a great time golfing or skiing or whatever else they might do and walk into a room and not find any place to eat. So it's really important that all the businesses work together to make this successful. Um, local residents, you know, that this key point is really, really important in participating, creating that experience for the guests. Um, one thing I love about this area, and it happens to me all the time up in Bear Valley, um, I'll have press or editors come up, or even some of the guests, and, and the one thing that Rado will always say, everybody here is so friendly. People wave to me as I'm driving by, you know, and I'm wondering, do they know me? And I said, no, people just do that. If you drive a Jeep and they drive, they're going to wave to you. They're going to think you know you and they know you. And people notice that about this area, which is fantastic. Um, so the residents, from business owners to people at grocery stores, it's really, really important for us to work together, including our kids. You know, it, what used to drive me crazy when I first got here was the, those banners of Flatlanders Go Home. Okay, that's what allows us to live here and pay our mortgages and enjoy this beautiful area that we're in. Now, how do we capture those people, make sure they understand that experience too? And I think it, it does need to start with the young ones. I tell a story, um, we were in the Bahamas, a small little island, Grand Bahamas, and it's really remote, so it's beautiful, but my imagination starts going wild. My husband and I and my daughter was one, driving in a little Jeep on this beautiful white beach, and we see nobody. And uh, we're driving, and I go, wow, this is oh, incredible. It's a beautiful place, blue water, white sandy beach. And then my mind starts going a little crazy, going, uh-oh. If something happens to us out here, no one's going to know. And we keep driving a little longer, and all of a sudden we come up to this little village of all these people. And they people in shorts, and, you know, they're, they, they're looking at us, and all of a sudden they keep coming closer. Because you're driving about 15 to 18 miles per hour on this little rocky road. And they start coming up to the Jeep, and it's this open-air Jeep. I'm going, oh, my gosh, my thought. I'm going, see, they're going to get us. It's all over. And uh, as they got closer and closer, and we're going, hi, they're going, hi, hi, you know, welcome. And they want to invite you in to get what, what they eat there was the conch. Anybody been out to that? Okay. And they invited us into their homes. And I was, and when we went back to our hotel, and I was asking the, the activities manager there, I said, I was just so amazed by these kids and everybody just welcoming us and thanking us for being here. And he was telling me that they do that in the schools. They teach these kids. Because of these people coming to visit our island, we get to live here. And I think that same mentality, if we can get that along the corridor, is going to keep people coming back. So I really uh, think it's an important component that all the residents and business owners participate in this. Can I remark that uh, I was thinking about this particular slide, and when they speak of the lure, they're speaking of, of uh, people who want to come to uh, this area to go skiing, or they want to come to this area to go bass fishing, or they want to come to this area to go to the caverns, and that's the lure. And I was thinking about Disneyland as an example of a place where we all want to go to Disneyland, for the rides and those kinds of things, but Disneyland has built a place where they have restaurants, they have shops. You pay your admission to get into Disneyland to see the rides, but then they have all the other things there that uh, that fulfill the experience. Uh, they have the shops, they have the restaurants, they have all the uh, little souvenirs that you walk away with at the end of the day. And you pay your admission fee, but by the time you, you leave, you probably doubled that admission fee in other expenses. And so they've built 
uh, build an entire uh, event or community around uh, the lure. And when you're speaking of the lure here, and when you're speaking of shops, services, lodging, etc., Disneyland is a good example of that sort of thing. Maybe not the best one that you would like, but, uh, but no. it's, a, it's something that completely fulfills. Uh, I think it's a great example because um, people don't go to go stay at Howard Johnson's or the California, well, they may go to stay at the California Hotel, but they're going for the activity, and the activity is going to get their money, and that's important that that activity be strong and the guests enjoy it, but the supporting businesses around are what's going to bring it back. If they go have a great time hiking and they come back in and their hotel is not so great and they can't find any good food, they're going to remember that. It's all part of the experience. But the lure is absolutely what's going to get them to come here. Everything else has to support it, and it's really, really important. I think everybody in the room, if they thought about the vacation they have, they can understand that. You went someplace, you went on a tour, you know, a cruise or something, but you know, before you left, you stayed at a hotel. And a lot of times there's little areas where you can shop and have a nice dinner out. People are sitting outside, and that's all part of it. And that's what we really need to build. Here in the it's a great, great so why they come and, and, and where they spend, we talked a little bit about this, but 20% of the visitor spending is on the lure. Whether they're coming to ski or they're coming to go kayaking or whatever activity they came for, they packed up their car with their golf clubs or with their kayaks, whatever it is, 20% of their spend is there. The rest of it is dining, lodging, and other activities. So huge opportunity, right, to capitalize on. And, and, and we just need to close on the rest of that business. So here's just kind of a look at the demographic and, and where people are coming from in this area and, and what the size of that market is. Uh, 1.6 million right here in this surrounding area, uh, just outside of Modesto and Stockton, we have Bear Valley call our day market. Um, huge market. I mean, we don't have to go very far. People don't have to fly in to Angels Camp in order for us to be successful. Huge market out there. Further out, uh, just beyond Modesto, down to San Jose, which is a big part of our market out of the South Bay. 10.4 million potential people. And then you go to the overnight market uh, slightly further, um, all the way out to the coast. Again, a big part of our market comes from the coast. 15.1 um, million. I think we could all do very well if we could capture uh, a decent percentage of that market. They're there. We live um, in a great area. The proximity of Angels Camp, and we've tested this out there at, with Bear Valley. Uh, just recently, we put a billboard out on um, 205 just before 120. And this year, we put a little banner at the bottom that said just two hours from Angels Camp, just an hour from Angels Camp. And we wanted people to kind of start connecting that with, wow, this is so close to where we live. And so it helps us as a business to utilize Angels Camp as this base camp of you're in the town, you're out of the valley, and now you're on vacation. Um, it makes Bear Valley closer, so it's great for us. But all these people, a, a huge market for us to capture. Okay, so challenges. Uh, right now, you know, visitors come to the region for specific activities, and a lot of them are not aware of all the diversity of things to do. And I think a big part of that is we don't all collaborate. We're doing more. You know, Lisa continues to work on that. These kind of guides and those kinds of things are going to help all of us communicate to the guests what's happening here. Um, I personally, before we moved here full time, we bought our home in Arnold. It's been about 11 years now. We bought that home to go skiing. So we would come up to the Bay Area, we'd drive right past Angels Camp, right past Murphy's, go to our home, go skiing Sunday, we're on our way home. And we actually found Murphy's by accident. We used to go to concerts down at Palma San, if anybody's familiar with the concert series down there, Palma San and Villa Montalvo, um, one time partnered with Murphy's. And so there's these three venues, same um, artist, it was Dave Cause in particular, we wanted to go see him. And I'm looking at the schedule of Palma San, oh, darn, we missed him. It's gonna be in Murphy's. Where in the heck at Murphy's is Dave Cause going to play? And here we've been coming for about four years at that time. And so I said to my husband, I'm not buying tickets until we go check this place out, because I just can't imagine where, you know, this guy's going to play. So we took a trip up to Ironstone, and of course, like everybody, you're blown away. We came up there, I'm like, oh my gosh, this place blows away Paul Masson, and I know this is the, the words I use a lot of people today. Um, but that finally opened our eyes to all the stuff that, you know, we're missing on our way to Arnold and heading up to go skiing. And I think it's the reverse as well. People come over here to Green, Green Arm Creek and go golfing and may not head past this highway. 
So if we collaborate and continue to work together, I think we're going to improve that. So Angels Camp, uh, what a perfect location. Again, that proximity, proximity of only two hours from Bay Area. For the Bay Area people, or Livermore, Danville, which is another big part of our market, it is so close. And you're getting away, but you don't feel like it's taking you forever to get there. With the economy, with the gas, and all those kinds of things, we have a great message. And again, it helps all of us. So the, the, the challenge is California has a lot to do. How do we take advantage of that, get them to choose here? And by the way, I'll just tell you that, that awareness of diverse activities. We had Easter up on the mountain on Saturday, and after our service, we came down and had a little wine and cheese, which we served all the local wines. Um, so it gave us an opportunity to visit with our guests, which I love, over a glass of wine. It's always fun. Um, we were able to explain to them, yeah, Millier, Black Sheep, Lavender Ridge, Hatcher, Newsom, Harlow, all from right here. And they go, where, where are these wineries in Murphy's? And just park downtown. It's like trick or treating. So if you go walking from winery, winery to winery, but it's it is um, it's still people who've been past holders for a long time just didn't even know. So it's still amazing. I thought it was just me that was missing the boat as I drove by, but it still exists today. So we still got work to do. Uh, travel packs. Ninety percent of all travelers arrive via private auto. I mean, here it's a huge percentage. At least you probably have more specific numbers. But especially right now, people are looking for closer activities to home. We saw this in Bear Valley over December, and this economy and what happened actually was a benefit to us in that the skiers that mainly would take trips to Tahoe or to Utah or to Colorado, instead of going a week out to Colorado, they came to Bear Valley for three or four days. So it really helped our skier days. We extended um, our skier days from the year before um, by, by quite a few numbers, so it was great. And again, able to tell visitors you're only two hours from the Bay Area. It helps all our story. It helps a lot of our stories because people, they know the drive to Tahoe. Um, as much as I love Tahoe going the back way when the snow melts, um, coming out of the Bay Area, it was tough. I leave Friday night, bad drive on the way there, sometimes six hours, sometimes 13. Coming home on Sunday, ruined my whole weekend. So that's one of the reasons we picked our home here. That still takes place, if not more so than it did years ago. So huge opportunity to capitalize on that. We still have a lot of guests that say, don't, don't tell anybody any more about it. But go ahead. Uh, again, to the graphics, you're going to see this throughout the presentation. Um, the company that we've worked with, these are proposed uh, graphics. That's not finalized. And as we get to the actual plan, you'll see that's part of the steps that we'll go through. But this gives you a, a feeling of a look and feel of where we're headed and what we think we can capitalize on for Angels Camp. When Angels Camp has the opportunity to call their own. Um, so the opportunity, let's market the entire region. So sports participation in California, huge. I mean, if you look at this list, bicycle, trail, camping, fishing, paddling, snow. Look at those numbers and we, we have it all. It, it's amazing. This is what the people in California want to do. We looked at the demographic numbers. Plenty of market for all of us to do really well. All we gotta tell them is it's all here. Come right here, spend the night, go do your activity. We're gonna have the eating and the dining. It's gonna be a great experience for you, but it's really, really important that we close on the whole comprehensive experience. These are the lures, these are the lures, yeah. I was, uh, I was shocked by the number of people involved in bicycling up here and how I, I had no idea until I started Bruce Castle, a local guy who puts together almost two or three times a week they're going on bicycle rides and they'll, the, the one they talked about uh, in the latest email I got was a ride uh, from the right? Murphy's, they were going down, uh, uh, what's the road out of Murphy's comes around, down Murphy's Road, uh, down Highway 4, uh, elevation climb of about 2,200 feet. Uh, there are some very avid uh, bicyclists around here, and it's incredible how many people are involved in that and what a great place this is uh, to do that. A lot of people don't realize that what we have, uh, what a wonderful thing we have up here in terms of bicycling, both on highways and, and uh, off road. Yeah. And I was personally upset that golf was not made. <laughs> Because uh, golf in in, uh, in, this, in this elevation is different than golf uh, down in the valley, and it's a different experience.
experience than the experience a lot of people in the U.S. Yeah. Well, I know fishing and camping in particular are really huge up in Alpine County. And uh, I don't know if many of you are familiar with the death ride. I wasn't until I got very involved in Bear Valley. The death ride takes place over the passes. Every year they sell out. They're done. 3,000 people, we can't take any more applications. People are dying to get in that race and kill themselves over the passes, but <laughs> I have a hard time driving over it. Um, no, but it, it's amazing. So basically, it surprised me as well how, how big it was. So why Angels Camp? I've mean, talked a lot about this throughout this presentation. Proximity is huge. Um, Everybody comes into this corner here, 4:49. What do I do? Okay, right now, when they get there, they're going. What do I do? I see no signs. I don't know what to do. So whether they're coming to Bear Valley or whatever, we have to capitalize on those opportunities to communicate to these guests. Look at all the stuff you've arrived. Here's what you can do. Whether it's heading downtown to Old Downtown Angels Camp or head out to the wine country or whatever it is, huge opportunity for us right here at that corner. That, that we don't take advantage of uh, today. Great jumping off point for outdoor activities. If you stay here, you're within you know an hour of anything that you want to do, a number of activities. Um, so Angels Camp is, is perfect. We can't say that in Bear Valley. We try. Buy a home in Bear Valley, and yes, you can call. Okay, it's only 40 minutes down the hill. But you know the reality is we're going to grab onto whatever we can, but this is the only place that really has that opportunity to say that. Um, Single source of information uh, with the Calaveras Visitor Bureau, a huge uh, marketing arm for not only Bear Valley, but all these businesses along the border have great recognition, do a great PR job, and, and here that is right there, here at Angels Camp. Um, and I, you know, the thing that I'm very excited about is that the city is committed to this branding plan. They've spent money, um, they've worked with this team, doing much more than anything else that I've seen going on here. And, being collaborative with all these businesses along the quarter, I think is going to be a really important part. Um, downtown will be the support for the Lord as the base camp for the Mountain Sports Recreation Show. How great will it be? The movie theater, all of it. I mean, many of us come down to Angels Camp today. But now how do we get those guests to go spend the night, Calaveras Transit or whatever, will take you up to go skiing, in our case, or take you to the wine country, but we have to work together. Yes. You know, one of the things... I've always been a skier up until I got so old I couldn't ski. <laughs> but one of the things that always bothered me, and we met at homes and lived on the weekends up in Arnold until we moved down here to retire. But when you get on the, when you hear the radio or the television, very seldom do we ever hear anything about Bear Valley. And I don't understand why that is left out. I mean, I think it must be a communication problem or that you're not doing a good job of feeding that information to the television or radio stations. Yeah. We actually communicate with them twice a day, every day. And what it is, and we actually went and met with them for the last two years in their studios and lighted them up, um, it's, they feel that their market, particularly Sacramento stations, is not interested in Bear Valley. So we tell our folks to do Email them. Let them know, where's Bear Valley? How come we didn't see Bear Valley? So, you know, they're a business. They're trying to sell to their target audience. And if their target audience is not requesting information on Bear Valley and they don't hear enough about it, only from us, they feel they're doing their job. So it's really, really important that the community continue to pick up that phone. Uh, they get a lot of emails and a lot of information from all kinds of resorts, as you can imagine. If they didn't put Squaw Valley or Heavenly on their report, they're probably going to hear about it. But they don't put Bear Valley in the report. They hear about it from us, but uh, not enough. So that's that's the communication we get from them when we go visit them. Um, we have had some opportunity. Mark Finan, a lot of people from Channel 5 actually have homes along here. Uh, really, really enjoy this area. Uh, but it's a safe story from every single one of them. You guys have to be market pool in order for us to have to cover you every single day. So if you don't see us and you want to see us, call them. Send them an email. Really, really be helpful for the entire area. Um, well, maybe you ought to make that a campaign. Okay. That's what we're talking about for next year. We spent out and, and sat with them uh, for the last two years, and hoping this was going to turn the corner. Uh, several of them came up and did features on us, which was great. We're all good. Now we're covered. It actually took us uh, a year and a half just to get the Mercury News on the snow report. And it's kind of interesting how that takes place. And nothing to do with the, the editorial. I called the graphics guy, and he said, oh, if I can make room for you, I'll make room for you. And then once we were on, the editorial guy just said, oh, I need to have that information. So sometimes the way you get through some of these things is kind of interesting. 
But yeah, I think that's a great idea and something we need to work on uh, for next year. I just want to say that <clears throat> the piece that Rosie got uh, Channel 5 to come up and do is basically a whole weekend on their valley is phenomenal. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, they did a really, really nice job. I think that's probably one of the nicest pieces on Bear Valley and by extension Murphy's and everything else that I've seen in a long time. I mean, that was very yeah. interesting. Thanks, Joe. What Joe's talking about is Isle of the Bay. For those of you that are familiar with the Bay Area, there's several of those shows, Bay Area Backroads, Isle of the Bay is one of them. Um, and this is PR activity. This is not a paid for advertising. We had to pay for that. It would probably be over $100,000. They came up and spent three days with us um, fil filming Bear Valley. And again, because of my affiliation with this group, I said, let's start an Angels Camp. So we started an Angels Camp. We took it through Murphy's. Because for us, all those assets along the corridor are important. But um, it was great. It was a, a, a nice piece, 30 minutes of Bay Area TV on Channel 5 about this area. I mean, it, like I said, it's a very expensive proposition to get that kind of thing. It's on our site right now. We haven't had a chance to see it. Um, okay. So the main idea, you moved me already. Okay. So what can angels can't grab onto with all these great things? Position this area as the Mount Sports Capital. With all the recreation that's here, it's a base camp for all those activities. You can come stay here at this base camp, and it is your spot to take advantage of all these wonderful activities. So the, the tagline or, or the, the themes become the mountain sports capital uh, of the world, I believe we're talking about, right? <laughs> hey, just ask for it. You're going to get it. Think big. Go ahead, No, but along those lines, we talk about thinking big. I mean, think about it. Angels Camp is already in the minds of many people just from the book. So there's an opportunity here. It's not like nobody knows Angels Camp. Um, the benefits, increased tourism spending, of course, in the region, increased overnight stays, a vibrant community, community for local residents, because all that money that comes in can get poured back into the, the local community, improving the things that we have here. Um, will attract other economic development. Again, those, those TOT dollars that come into here, um, and the more money will stay right here in the county. It makes our life here even better. So, a uh, great opportunity for us to take advantage of. Creating a brand identity, again, another one of these cool um, images. Uh, what it says is, this is why you bought it, now use it. So, it, it's kind of hitting on those, those people, which I know a lot of our customer base, and probably some of you guys as well, um, have their skis in their closet, have their kayaks there, they buy all this stuff, they don't necessarily take it out, um, something they thought they needed to do. Um, let them know that right here, two hours away, you guys can come go ahead and use that stuff. I, I thought this was really clever. Again, this is proposed. Um, we're going to head down these lines in, in some capacity, but um, this, these aren't the final. So how do we come up with a message that carries across uh, the entire corridor? So here's the brand promise. Whether cruising the mountain with materials by foot, bike, horse, or snowmobile, bagging the elusive rock face, carving fresh turns through untracked powder, racing through class four rabbits, reeling in a trophy fish, zip lining over a canyon, or exploring the dark depths of the caverns and gold mines, Angels Camp is your home base for all types of mountain sports enjoyed in the region. If we can have people walk away and be at their home in, in Stockton or Santa Clara or Monterey, and when somebody says, uh, yeah, it was just Angels Camp, so said, oh, what's Angels Camp? and they can tell the story, then we've been successful in our job. Uh, base Camp Promise, so in a, in a historic and engaging downtown, we already have an historic, it's great. People can come here and there's already history here. Uh, so that part's easy, a lot of cities can't even create that. We already have that going. Outdoor recreation at your doorstep, an evening dining and entertainment district. How do we create that atmosphere for people to come in and dine, walk downtown, and really just enjoy the experience here so that when we drive down Angels Camp, we see all these bodies all over the place. Wouldn't that be great? Um, place to simply hang out and enjoy life. And shop, yeah, absolutely shopping. I mean, these kids, that's right. They've had their engaging outdoor activities. So the brand slogan, California's mountain sports capital, Angels Camp redefining the rush. Um, So brand logo concepts, uh, again, these are proposed. Uh, we actually really even haven't got into the branding um, uh, work yet. Uh, we just put out an RFP for some companies to come back and let us know what they can do. But this came out of DDI just to give us an idea. What, what can we do? We want to hang on to the frog. The frog's been huge for Angel's Camp. How do we do that? But 
evolved into taking advantage of all these other assets along the corridor. So this is a couple of the ideas they came back with, um, which I thought were really clever, but we'll keep working through this and continue to communicate with you guys um, as we move through that.
phenomenal what, what was documented about Angels Camp, the opportunity that's here, and, and the plan that was developed by DDI in collaboration with this team. I've only been on for a short time, so this is work that's been going on for quite some time. Um, but what it includes are, are these things, develop the Grand Graphics Program, which we've just recently started, develop Main Street Plan, which again, Kathy's team uh, is working on, develop the grant plan funding, and Anne's gonna talk about where we're at with that at this time, and then begin activities to support the plan. Um, it's all gonna take time, money, energy, enthusiasm, so getting out to all of you guys and letting you know what's going on, and hope you continue to hear more about it and start participating uh, in the activity. So where we're at, I'm gonna turn this over to Ann and uh, talk about the money. Thank you, Lucy, that was great. Um, well, the branding plan, of course, is completed and it was approved last uh, October by the city council and then the brand leadership team was named uh, active uh, on behalf or uh, are, are in conjunction with the city council, uh, and we report to them. Um, we were awarded two community block grants, uh, totaling $85,000, and uh, part of that helped to pay for the branding study, um, and uh, also for the uh, graphics standards manual and the whole graphic design. Uh, those proposals are out for waiting for those uh, uh, proposals to come back in. Um, then in the 0809 budget here, which ends at the end of June this year, the grand implementation um, was $23,000, and that was to help with things, even like printing these, uh, the, the booklets that we're handing out tonight with the uh, slides in them. Um, and then there was a business recruitment study and it is our hope that before uh, the end of June that we will go, be able to go out for proposals from organizations that are um, experts in developing the statistics and the demographics and all the information so that, and as well as a list of potential businesses that we could either attract from other parts of the county or from other parts of California or America to come in, the, the appropriate ones. And this isn't talking about Walmarts and things like this, but this is talking about sports related or restaurants or other types of uh, uh, activities and businesses that, that uh, both local people and tourists would like to see. Um, the facade improvement grant, I think all of you read that that was just recently we received one of the grants. I think we're one of 15 counties or towns in all of California to get that grant. It's a $300,000 grant. This is really a big deal. Um, the, um, Terry Cox, who writes the city's grants, heard about this. We had, I think, only two weeks to put the whole thing together. We, over a weekend, got all the business owners downtown together, as well as the property owners for a meeting. Uh, people signed up. Terry wrote the grant. We submitted it. The city council approved it. We submitted it. And it was uh, the first time this grant's been out, and uh, it was highly competitive. And for Little Angels Camp, to get it was an amazing thing, mainly because we already had, we, the, the city council and the town was committed through the branding plan. Um, the um, ACWA has this, this facade, uh, the brass plaques, the historic plaques plan that it's got going. And so there were a lot of things happening. Even the lighting downtown was seen as something that this town was already committed to growth and to improvement. So that, all that will be rolled out fairly soon. It'll probably take a year to a year and a half before you start to see all of that, but everything from signage to improved uh, facades. Um, and then um, <clears throat> through the work that we've been doing, and this is, an ex this is a five to 15 year plan. It includes everything from parking to signage to re maybe rerouting streets, all those things, outdoor eating areas, uh, trees, everything, sitting out areas. There's a lot of work, and it has to be done specifically with the, uh, in conjunction with the city council and the city government, but we can certainly help come up with these ideas and push them along and sell them to the public. And as we started to look at where is the money coming from, 
Um, we, it, was, it was our opinion in talking to the California Redevelopment Agency and a number of communities that redevelopment was the way to go because it's one of the ways to take ta tax money that is um, developed through redevelopment and it brings it back into, into the city. So we have, we are working with the city council on this. Uh, there, we've done a lot of work as the brand leadership team um, and with uh, the city government. But there is, the city council is having a workshop next Tuesday the 21st before its city council meeting. Um, and they're bringing in a number of people to talk about what redevelopment can do for a community and how you go about it. So if you're interested in that, please come. Um, yes? I was going to say, I think it's really important for everybody to look at all the grants that have been applied for and received to pay for this. This isn't the money that the city is spending. This is money that everybody's worked hard to get to make this happen. And that's one thing that comes up a lot. And uh, so this is just the start. Um, and it's, it's a, you know, as I said, a five to 15 year program. Um, one of the things I've learned in, in this process is it really takes a long time. Um, it takes a long time to find a grant, to apply for it, to get it, and then to work through all the legal process to even use the grant. Um, it takes a long time for the city council um, to uh, work for this because when you think of all the competing interests that the city council has from everything from firemen and policemen to sewer and that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, it, it, it's not something that uh, as a former business owner I could say I think we should do this. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, so it, it, uh, it's a matter of everyone working together. We have a terrific brand leadership team and I, I should say that it also includes uh, George Wendt from Boars. Steve Fairchild from uh, uh, Cavern Tours, Moaning uh, Caverns, and uh, really a lot of people involved in the tourism industry, and they are very, very supportive, and they uh, are, we're all sort of working together already. So that, I think, is the end of our program, and we're, all of us would like to answer any questions you have. And like there's three, there's 400 and some thousand dollars worth of grants there. Mm -hmm. And that's all been approved? Yes. Who was the, who put that together? Well, um, the city works with Terry Cox, who is their grant writer for a variety of grants. Um, so we got two community block development grants, one to do the brand new study, and one to do now the next step is, I mean, we're all dying to use the graphics. And I think the police cars are coming up for repainting and that sort of thing, and everybody wants to use the graphics. We don't want them used until we agree on the final one. So that's, we've gotten that grant, um, and uh, now the $300,000 grant. So, I mean, it's really terrific. There's a lot of money out there. Somebody's just got to write the grant and Yeah. Maybe you could give a special grant to cut that uh, noise from the bar over there. So <laughs> That would be a good help for sure. I don't know how much it's going to take, but I highly recommend it. Can we put it on your chair? I haven't even turned my hearing aids off my head. Still hear me. Any other questions? Can I remark that uh, if, you, if you were not at the original presentation that uh, Destination Development did, you cannot appreciate uh, fully what branding really means. Uh, he showed uh, photographs, lots of photographs of this community, but he also showed lots of photographs of other communities that have embraced the branding idea and how it's, it's just totally uh, changed the character of the downtowns of those uh, communities and how it's revitalized those communities and brought in so many additional dollars. The property values have risen enormously. Uh, local jobs have burgeoned uh, like crazy. Uh, and all of those things are possible here. Uh, part, of, part of this uh, graphics thing is it talked about, for example, uh, creating uh, an identity, creating signage that leads people down to a historic downtown, creating a point at, at which you arise down, arrive downtown and you say, I'm in downtown because we've got an archway 
or we've got a, a different street surface, or we've got some sidewalk areas that are, are interesting, uh, something that says I'm here, something that says I've left. Uh, this community block grant for facade improvement means that small businesses downtown can get money to to change the appearance of their of their business, and that's a large part of creating this identity of what the downtown will look like. The ambiance, right? So, uh, you know, over the over many years, the downtown has been deteriorated somewhat. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to really refresh it and make it uh, look inviting, and that will attract businesses to fill all these vacant spaces downtown, and the. Uh, the positive for us as residents here is we're going to have a more interesting downtown, little restaurants to go to, little shops to go to, fun places to spend our money as well as have the tourists to spend their money. So uh, it's a, if you had seen that original presentation, I think you'd really be impressed by by what the possibilities are. There, there, there are two things that I want to add to that. First is on the 25th, which is two Saturdays from now, there is a mountain bike race out of Frogtown and on the Tryon property. So, uh, I mean, this is new, um, and I, it hasn't been widely publicized, so there must be some group bringing it in. But the point is that this is the start, and it's just like uh, with Melanie, with you know, all the fishing tournaments out of Maloney's and all of that. Uh, it brings people in, they check out the trails, they come in in advance, they check out the fishing, then they have all these tournaments. So. We don't know that they're here, just like Worldmark. There's so many people that come up uh, continually up here to this area. We have these things. I mean, I didn't even realize that little Orr's office out on 49 that I pass two or three times a week was the Orr's organization that is worldwide. I mean, it's in, you know, the American Express platinum card, you know, thing you can have at Orr's. You know, Orr's trip, it's in, uh, it's connected with Hilton in turn, Hilton International and their Grand Vacation Club. They are they are known all over the world, and I always thought that Orr's was just a name that people use locally until I became involved with this. Uh, Cavern Tours, uh, Steve Fairchild, was all over the world talking about how to create taverns that are exciting as a destination and that sort of thing. So we, ha we have all this here, and I didn't know until we started talking about this with the branding. And, and just the second thing is, we, we mentioned a couple times, is that tourism leads to further economic development. I, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, tourism jobs are just low-end jobs, and they're not all. <laughs> but within a few weeks of our last September, um, the, the news that was covered about the new branding plan for Angel's Camp, Tim Shears got a call from, I think you've heard this before if you go to the city council, but he got a call from a very high-tech company down in the Palo Alto area, in the Bay Area. And they, they, they do security for great big, huge uh, computer uh, operations, including the Pentagon and the State Department and that. And they wanted to get out of Palo Alto but they have about a 250 workforce that is young, between 25 and 45, very, very competitive and outdoor oriented. And they wanted to be close enough to get to Livermore Labs and to get to Palo Alto, but they want to move out, they want to move their location. And when they saw Angels Camp in the Mountain Sports Capital, they said, this is what they're looking for. They want some place that's got the ambiance, it's got all the things that their people need to have a good life. And when you think about that, I mean, whether that comes to fruition, but it's just one example of what having a really good destination, a place that for locals as well as for um, for tourists will do for Angel's Camp over, over the long run. So with that, I'll turn it back to, if there are any other Could questions? Could I make one other remark uh, in favor of the Calvary's Visitor Bureau, who's done such a great job of promoting our town. Uh, I know recently we've been fighting here the idea that the state has put forward to put a golf tax on our sport. Uh, so they want to they want to uh, tax golf, but they're not going to tax skiing, or they're not going to tax uh, tax bicycling or other things. They want to tax golf, 
and add 10% to the, to the idea of playing around golf or having a membership at a club. And this would be very detrimental to golf. And so we've been fighting that. And uh, the county has a shortfall, uh, you know, part of the budget problems. And, and they're talking about the possibility of diverting the transient occupancy tax that goes to generate travel to this community. So these are a couple of uh, examples of how the budget impasse is uh, affecting uh, revenue generation, really, and job generation in California. People are coming up with some, some bad ideas uh, to extract money from enterprises that are helping to generate jobs and revenue in California. And so these are some things that you need to be aware of and need to speak out of. Oh, Judy. Yes. I noticed in the VIP open, which is a very, very good idea, under attractions, the Angel Camp Museum is not listed. Uh, it would be nice if it could be the next credit. Talk to this. That's just if they're offering a discount. If they're offering yeah, a discount. Yeah, we offer something, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I talked with Steve the other day, and I told him we'd get him in the next run if they want to do something. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Well, I want to thank Rosie. Thank you, man.